everyone, my name is Hannah Van Asse, I'm an actress and basket maker and today in this video I'm going to show you how to make a little wall basket or a hanging basket like this. I want to thank Bridget Graham for giving me the idea. She showed, me, she showed us um, her own beautiful example in the Facebook group called Basket Making with Hannah Van Asse. Um, you can become part of that as well, just uh, search it. And, um, so thank you Bridget for giving me the idea. So let's dive in and I'll show you how to make one of these. I only want a small basket, something like to store keys in or something. Um, so I'm going to make my base small enough, about 8 inches, 20 centimeters. So I'm going to take my base sticks, 23 centimeters or 9 inches. So I'm just weaving the normal way, any way you make a base. Um, I have another video on how to do that exactly, so I'll leave the link below the video um, where you can watch some instructions if you haven't done this before. I'm going to take my um, uprights, I have 24, and I'm going to push them into the base like any other basket you're going to do one either side of the base sticks. I'm going to turn the whole thing over and bend my uprights up like you would with any other basket as well. And now I'm just going to do a little bit of wheel around the edge, just a little bit, we don't really need height here. So I've finished putting that wheel on, it's just really to keep your uprights up and in place. Next we are going to add height and we're going to start a weave called packing. Um, it's basically weaving with one rod up and down and up and down and in such a way as that um, we will be adding height on just one side of the basket. So I'm just going to take my weaver, a little rod, and I'm just going to put it in a gap. Doesn't matter where, just maybe where you want your highest point. Um, to start, I'm going to turn around the upright into the basket and then bring it back out the basket. And straight away, I'm going to turn around. I'm going to make him turn around the next upright, go into the basket and then bring the rod back out of the basket, still in the same gap. For our next step, I am going to go one upright further. So the last time we turned back here, now I'm going to turn back the next upright and then weave in 
back out to the basket, into the basket, out of the basket, and last time we turned back here, now this time I'm going to turn here, and then go in and out, and in and out. Now I'm coming back over to the other side, and I'm again turning, I'm turning back, um, around the next upright. I'm going back towards the left now and the same here. I am going to turn back around the next upright. I will try and keep my joints on the inside of the basket so I'm just going to leave the butt there on the inside and then I'm going to put the new butt in into the space where the old one would have come out of. Once um, we have kind of gone halfway, I've gone a little bit further than halfway, which is fine too, I'm going to start coming back. So instead of uh, turning around the next upright, I am going to start turning around the previous upright, if that makes sense. This is my last turn here. And this time I'm going to turn right, turn back um, around the upright just before it. So now I'm back all the way at the top. So I've turned around all these uprights. And now I'm back at the top. So what do we do now? Um, really, we can't turn around twice around the same upright without going over it at least once um, to cover it. Because if we do, um, that will leave kind of quite an obvious gap. To stop that from happening, I'm going to go all the way over these um, turns over the very last turn and then make another turn where I haven't made one before then go all the way back do the same on this side make an extra turn here and then come all the way back which means that by then I have covered all my turns and then I can start the same pattern again so once we've covered all of them up then we can start back like we did before in that we, we take the turn that is closest to the middle and then build it up to the top again and again and again. So now I'm going all the way down. Um, I have to join before I get to turn here. I'm all the way down. This is my very last turn, so I'm going to turn around the next one. And then I'm going to weave all the way over to the other side. turn around the next one and come back up. I will need to join here. And this time I'm going to take my weaver all the way over to the right hand side and turn around one stick closer to my high point. So one stick closer and we'll be building up height again. At this stage I have built up quite a bit of height here. So I'm going to think about um, bringing my uprights in and making them curve up a little bit. To do that I'm going to take my tie out. I'm just going to take these central uprights and bend them over. And the other uprights can kind of stay where they are. 
So I'm going to tie these ones here. So these uprights are the ones I want to curve. I'm going to tie them as well. And I am also going to um, attach them to the, onto the base with a little string. So just like that, with a little bit of string attached onto the base, I now have a nice curve here on the side. And I'm going to keep on weaving just like that. Now I've, again, I've come up to the point where I can't turn around anymore. I've done all the uprights, which means I again, I'm going to go all the way down, go to my um, next one that I haven't turned around at yet. Go all the way down this side, do the same here and then come back up. And then we start again, taking one, for one turn further in every single time. And this really, um, this pattern just is continued um, until you find you have enough height here and then it's time to put the border down. Now I feel I've gone high enough um, and I'm ready to put the border down. For this one you can put on any border you want, uh, I don't know, three or four behind two or whichever one you feel like. It just gets very tight here at the top. So I think it might be easier and it also looks nice if we just do a simple um, track border. We're just going to do a simple behind one track border. So I'm just going to kink slightly above where I need to go and I'm going to bring my upright out behind one. And then the next one goes also behind one and behind one every single time. So I've trimmed it all, I'm pretty chuffed with this shape, it looks good, the border looks lovely. Now we just need to make a little handle on it. Now you can do that by just putting a piece of string in it and weaving the ends away. Or you could do it with a, with a willow stick. I'm just going to push this one in into the base that we had there. Making sure it's kind of even where I'm going to come out and this little handle only needs to be small it just needs to be enough to hook around a nail or something so I just went in underneath and now I'm just gonna wrap this one around the hoop that's there And then I'm going to make sure that I'm also going to loop in underneath the border on this side. And then twist the rod. And then twist the rod around to the opposite side and then weave it away. And Thank you so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this video. Um, if you are interested in learning how to make baskets properly and you are like many other people at the moment, kind of stuck, you can't travel, um, I have developed the, uh, online classes. Um, from July the 1st, I will be launching my second class. It's called Overwork. To celebrate that during a period of two weeks, I will be opening 
boat courses, I will be offering boat courses at a reduced price. I will also be offering boat courses together at a very special bundle price. So if you're really interested and want to learn how to bake baskets at this time from your own home with me by your side, this is the time to go and have a look at that and dive into it. Um, the price offer is only for two weeks. So I hope you'll join me there. Um, for now, have a lovely day and keep on weaving. Bye.